everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable day. Uh, it's been a good week for me so far. It's been very busy. Uh, don't see it lightening up anytime uh, in the next two days, but uh, that's okay. I'm prepared for it, have it uh, mapped out to the best ability, and uh, I have the ability to adapt, so I will be okay. Uh, before I get started, I'm going to remind you that we are in the middle of a fundraiser for specifically black men lead and restoring ghettos for forgotten daughters. Uh, I uh, shot a video uh, expressing the urgency of what it is we're trying to do and to solicit your support financially. There will be uh, information in the description box on how you can support the work we're doing on an ongoing basis and the basis that have done for the last 20 years uh, we definitely need uh, your support it's great and everything to get likes and shares but uh, the things that we do literally cost and so I'm gonna leave that where it is and I want to talk about where I'm here to talk about uh, on my way for my second run at the gym today uh, got to make things happen uh, you're going to have to forgive the ambient noise. Uh, this is about as quiet as it gets in this vehicle. Uh, and I don't even, you know, recognize it until I go back to edit videos or listen to videos. And, you know, I spent a lot of time actually riding in here um, with the radio off just so that sound is almost relaxing to me because it's what I normally do. But anyway, um, I see that um, since Simone Biles has initi had initially announced that she was withdrawing from the team competition, and from what I uh, just found out, it looks like she also withdrew from the individual all-around uh, competition. Um, a lot of blacks are giving her the business. I mean, to the point where it's almost borderline dragging, and I've seen some pretty nasty comments. Uh, she's definitely getting some support. People are feeling her. But I see a lot of people attacking her. And so someone asked me, why do we do that? Why do we do it when the same people we are lifting and praising do something that we may not approve of how do we go from one end of the spectrum to the other so easily so quickly and almost instinctively and it's actually quite simple uh at least for me because like i said that's a part of what born in captivity psychopathology is a leg legacy of slavery is about that's what uh, the undoing of the African-American mind is all about. It's understanding a lot of these mental dynamics that play out in practices and behaviors that we don't necessarily understand. And so what we have is a situation where because blacks have experienced success on a collective level, uh, almost non-existently, when we are able to see someone who looks like us, who is experiencing success, definitely at a very high or exceptional level, we start to find ways to live vicariously through them. Uh, we start to celebrate with them as if we have some direct benefit of their, uh, of their success. We literally gauge how we feel based off of how they're doing at any given point in time. That's uh, the crux of the vicarious dynamic. You know, parents live vicariously through their kids, hoping their kids will achieve things that they weren't able to do in athletics, in academics, and so many other ways they do that. But we also as a collective tend to look at people and see them being successful and we live vicariously through them. We will defend them. We will go to war for them. Uh, for the longest, everybody was going mad crazy to war for R. Kelly. Uh, not because they believed he was innocent, but because he represented so much of what they had invested in and him being that exceptional, that gifted, that much of a genius. 
uh, a lot of people were living vicariously through them in so many different ways. And it's not always the obvious things. Not, not, not everybody's living through his genius. Some people are just living through the fact that there's a person that looks like them that's being praised, that's being celebrated, that's being elevated. It is a mental dynamic that takes place on so many different levels. I can't possibly address it all here on this thing. But here's the thing. The problem with living vicariously through someone is it takes you away from who you are. It, it takes you away from being the best that you can possibly be. What I see when I see people like that, and I'm not saying it's anything wrong with celebrating another black person's success. I'm not saying it's anything wrong with in some way relating to that person and being happy for them solely based on the fact that they're black or solely based on the fact that they're a black man or a black woman because you know how hard it is for us to achieve anything. What we must go through in order to have anybody acknowledge who we are. And so I get it. I get that, you know, that's something to be excited for. I, I, I agree. I think it is exciting. I think we need to celebrate those people who are doing exceptional and extraordinary things. But what we can't do is get into the mindset that what they're doing is some type of phenomenon that it doesn't apply to me, that I don't have a lane in this world that if I got in it and I did all the things that I'm capable of doing, that I can't achieve something exceptional. I can't achieve something extraordinary. I can't be phenomenal. That's not the case. The case is most of the time we focus on the wrong thing. We get caught up in things that <clears throat> limit us. We practice our behaviors that are representative of our limited beliefs. We're acting the way we're acting because that for a lot of us, that's as closest to success and throwing up dominance in the face of white supremacy as we will personally get because we're not going to work on ourselves enough to go out and be the representation of that type of excellence on our own and it's a shame that it's that way because each of us has a uniqueness that we can offer the world that will totally blow the lid off of your world and your environment and your place of being let me tell you this young lady showed up in Tokyo after being told that despite the fact that she literally blows her competition away by performing uh, moves that none of her competition, which are the best in the world, can even do, much less do as perfectly as she does it. They can't even pull it off to where the, it, they can say that the move is completed. Nobody. And she's doing these moves and she's being told that because you're so excellent, because you're so extraordinary, because you're so phenomenal, you're, you're so far away from everyone that you're going to force people to try to do what you're doing to keep up with you and people are going to get hurt. Well, she had to risk being hurt in order to do it. She had to risk that. That was a part of her decision. Do I want to go after this move? Do I want to push the envelope? Do I want to take things to another level? Because there's a possibility, because it's never been done before, that I can injure myself attempting it. She chose to do that. That set her apart from everyone else, and it should be respected. The level of the difficulty of anything is a part of the judging of, uh, of a performance in gymnastics. Level of difficulty is considered. When you take that out of it and you bring and you grade on a curve that allows everyone else to be close to her, that's not fair to her. Personally, I'm not a quitter. I don't believe in giving up. But in the times that I played sports and life, every every situation is different in your approach. I have never played a sport to where if my head isn't in the game, I could end up breaking my neck. You know, I mean, I guess you could say in football that if I'm not paying attention, but I mean, you know, not like doing the type of moves she does, you know, where you're that high in the air and you can literally come down on your neck and snap your neck. Uh, I mean, you could do that in football, but you could do that whether you're on your game or not. You get hit the wrong way and land the wrong way. It's going to happen. That's a part, again, a part of the game. You accept it when you get out there and you, you know, it's, it's, it's always a possibility. You try to prepare yourself, you try to protect yourself. But in gymnastics, being off your game could really end up costing you dearly over the course of your life. Second of all, she's talking about her mental health. 
and I, I'm not privy to what she's, you know, what she's feeling at the moment, but I can tell you being told that you've spent your whole life developing into something that's so extraordinary. You're the only one in the entire world like it, but it's not going to be acknowledged. That's a lot to be sit up and say, you know, told, Hey, look, you're that good, but we're not going to acknowledge it. We're not going to let you be that much better than everybody else. And so, you know, again, it goes back to when I was growing up and my grandmother would tell me, you're going to have to be three times better than any white man that's out there to get the same thing that he's going after. But she would follow it up and say, but you know what you are, you're that good. You're that good that you can go out and you can be three times better. And I believed it. And I have gone out and I have done some unbelievable things. But I can tell you, I feel for her. I feel for her because on a grand stage, she's not getting to do what she's trained her whole life to do. Now, granted, she's done it so many times. She's so freaking decorated that if she never steps foot on a gymnastics floor again, she's the best who, have, who has ever done it, male or female, bar none. So she's already written her legacy in stone. But she has something she still wants to give, and she's not being allowed to give it solely based on the power structure flexing its muscle to keep her in place. I would rather stand with her and say, hey, I feel what you're doing. But I also understand the business behind it. If you're not going to acknowledge me, I'm going to get in your pocket. But Simone Biles is, without question, the best gymnast in the world. I just said that. Well, who do you think people were going to be tuning in to watch when it comes to gymnastics? How many people can actually name another gymnast that's competing? That's how good she is. That's how powerful her brand is. That's how much money she's worth. And she's leveraging it. She's doing exactly what Naomi Osaka did in the last two uh, Grand Slams. I'm the number two, number two player in the world. It's a bunch of people who know who I am and will tune in, t tune in just to watch me. I'm taking that away from you until you respect exactly what I'm telling you I have an issue with. And be willing to walk away from it because their brand is strong enough that they are going to eat regardless. And I respect that. That's a good business move. It's not just a good personal move. It's a good business move. But to answer the question of why we are turning on her, it's because we are taking it personal. Because to us, it is personal. To us, it is like we have just been forcefully withdrawn from the Olympic gymnast competition. And we are outdone about it and we can't actually do anything about it because we don't actually compete, but we feel like we do. And that's what's happening right now. Everybody's upset about it. My thing is we've got to start learning how to love on one another, be there for one another, stand with one another and be to one another everything that we can possibly be. We owe it to ourselves to learn how to love ourselves, to learn how to love our brothers and sisters and how to relate to them without living through them. You have a life to live. You do. Man, this parking lot is packed. That's why I hate coming in the evening. Uh, but you have a life you should be living that's solely based on your potential and what you can do and what you should be doing. Stop living vicariously through others. Celebrate them. You know, I, I'm not telling you not to celebrate them. As a matter of fact, I'm encouraging you to celebrate people who are doing excellent. But seek your own excellence. Demand excellence from yourself. Put yourself in a situation to live life on your terms and so and other people will celebrate you
and then you can show other people how you achieved what you achieve how you're doing what you're doing and you can pull someone up and you what before you know it we're looking down the line and a lot more of us are living these exceptional phenomenal lives that we thought were impossible at some point in time that's on us stop putting the weight of the world on those people and expecting them to be anything but human and start living your exceptional life. That's what I have for you. I'm, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. I've made it to the gym. Look, we still need your support. I can't stress that enough. So go to the description box, either click the link or use the, um, the um, Cash App account for the Odyssey Project. And that's also in the description box and show some love. On that note, I've got to get out of here and get in this gym uh, and make it happen again. I've decided to get myself back to where I was up until a few years back. Um, and it, you know, it kind of helps when you, one of the businesses you own is a fitness company, huh? Uh, well, you know, I haven't actually trained anyone in a long time. I do research and write programs now. I leave the training to my son. Y'all too hard to work with. Uh, I done got too old for the patients to be working with y'all on a one-on-one -on -one basis out there in that sun or in the gym. But um, I love doing research and finding where we're at and writing programs and designing things and doing that. But it'll help if I were working on my So I've actually designed my own program and I'm working that out now. Uh, I've lost almost 20 pounds since uh, I started to really commit to it in, in February. And I got another 15 that I'm going to go. And see how that looks on me. Uh, I'm not trying to get down to where I was when I was competing. I just want to get down to something really nice uh, from where I'm at in my life. But I, I got to get out of here. But anyway, look, show some love and support us. Also, show some love uh, to our people, man. Uh, we got to stop dragging one another, start, love, start loving on one another, and start giving people the space to be human. Um, not everybody's doing something for the purpose of hurting you or disappointing you. Some people are simply living their lives and attempting uh, to navigate some very difficult moments uh, that we may not even understand. And I think that we need to give them room to do that. Now, there are some things that people are doing that are obviously a slight at us, uh, a target at us. And we need to call that out uh, because... Um, You've got to know it for what it is. I don't think there's any evil intent uh, towards the black race with Simone uh, withdrawing and pulling out. So on that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day, and I'll see you sometime tomorrow. Oh, Dr. Blanchard, Dr. Michael Blanchard, my friend, my colleague, uh, are going to get on, and we're going to talk about a research, some research we conducted and a paper we co-wrote uh, that deals with uh, school security, the policing in schools, the military race, milita militarization of schools and uh, how schools are beginning to resemble prisons and what that means for the black kids. Uh, we released that paper last week. Uh, it's published on a couple of spots. It's even pu published on the Odyssey Project site. We're going to actually be uh, talking about that tomorrow morning on a live stream. So you guys uh, be ready for that. It's going to happen, uh, I believe, at 8 a.m. CST. So it's going to be early in the morning because I got some uh, quality time, some QT time with my 14-year-old son tomorrow. So I'm breaking out early for the day. Uh, on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.